remember when I first showed up at Berkeley, and you know, I'd just been a grad student and now I was a professor, but I didn't feel like a professor. I felt like the missing link, right? The thing that was neither graduate student nor professor. Maybe we input it as some You felt like you had to be something it, that was so um, different than what you had just been a month before. That was a challenge. Okay, so in this case, we input our award. I overprepare like the most uh, young so professors. I have too many PowerPoint slides. I spoke way too fast. It was just not working at all. It was uh, almost terrifying because I didn't know anybody. It was, uh, and I see all these smart uh, faces looking at me and expecting me to somehow give them the knowledge. We say in Danish, I was an unwritten leaf. Nothing was known about me and I didn't know anything about them and that there was this big gulf between us that we had to bridge. I wanted to establish that connection, start to uh, the dialogue. Great, we obtained back the same... You have to moderate your emotion, you have to moderate your enthusiasm. It's a very delicate balance. I want to have a surface that is slightly thicker. When I found that balance, things started to run a lot smoother. I saw a change the way I teach. I lecture less, I post question more, so what are we introducing now? Those things, those involvement that I brought into the class, make them excited about the class. Friday is going to be $7.50, I know. There's this huge signal coming back at you about what the students are thinking, whether they're excited, whether they're bored, and you react to that, and you, you grow with that. The behaviors that result from trying to optimize those things. The responsibility is just to give back to the students all, the, all, you know, all of the energy that they're giving to you and that they're giving to the class. You have to trust that the material you have and their curiosity, their intellectual capabilities, their humanness, they will reach out from their side and I'll be reaching out from my side and in the middle somewhere we'll meet and we can build something together. In an ideal classroom environment, the students have to be uh, participating. Evaluate again for 30 degrees. You have those connections happening from both ends. You have the, the teacher you know, trying to engage the students and the students responding to that very, very supportive environment. It's that dialogue between what fires you up about the material and what's exciting to them that really causes the course to emerge the way it is. Check it out, look at how much concurrency is happening. This it's is really exciting to watch people go from expecting the answer to be supplied to reaching out for that answer on their own. If you have a situation where I can just see in my peripheral vision that there's six or eight hands up and there's some clearly defined issue that we're discussing and people have something to say about it, I'm just going to step back and be the, just the one who says you, 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 you. I'm no longer a professor at that point in time. I'm just one of the team members in the class. I'm almost, sometimes I feel like I'm a student myself and, and it's almost like reversing the role. And the key question for you guys is just that, which is the best? I see them as co-producers of knowledge. The success of each class critically depends on their participation and inputs. That participation is actually vital. If without the participation, is the, the class is a stale. Is, is there is no energy. We check your geometry to see if when the student actually okay. challenges me or asks me questions that I haven't covered in class. And that's what keeps us on our toes, and that's what keeps us Berkeley faculty very engaged. I think the most important, impressive thing to me is when a student actually thinks about something that happens in the lecture and they're skeptical about something and they go and do some investigation on their own right. What do you think the difference is between blue and yellow? It's not just you have the guts to speak up, but you also have the commitment to actually do the work. I've done a case in my class and I created an Excel spreadsheet I thought was perfect. Guess what? A polite MBA student sent me a revised version, which is 10 times better than what I created before. They tell you something about our students, right? These students are very smart. They're going to push you. Because they just want to know. If I had to distill as much as I could, what the overall lesson that I would like to convey is, is respect. It's respect for the data, for sound reasoning, for other people's opinions, and humility in the face of how complex the world is. Okay, so there's a, there's a discrete decision at the top. It's teaching them the not the answers field. to questions, but really so how you go about attacking a question which is open and in two years, in ten years, probably still will be open. How you make progress on these hardest questions. Everybody remember back. We got a because you know that even if they forget every specific piece of information that you've just covered, that they're going to take away something very formative that is going to serve them well.
What I'm going to do is I'm going to the same... You're transforming not only their technical position, but you're also imprinting in them some ethical values. You have to put your practice into the world context, in the societal context. This way is all about working together as a team, being collaborative. We believe in actually creating a bigger pie for the society so that uh, even though sometimes it might be at, at your disadvantage for yourself, but it's better for other people, we'll do it too. And I wonder if color has a transitivity thing. I don't know. Yeah. Students learn not just from the teacher or from the textbook or from the homework, but from each other. There is some sense of a shared consciousness. We're all working towards something together. A lot of people are really motivated by competition, but on the other hand, a lot of people learn best when they can collaborate. <laughs> We were doing these competitions in class, and what I saw was people would help each other because they knew that the best way to win the competition was to really have a lot of ideas flowing, and then people really push themselves. Okay, good job, everybody. In the classroom, one of the things I, I want to uh, transmit is that you have to love what you're doing. Uh, and that you know, transforms into passion, transforms into engagement. It was a transformative experience. The process of learning never stops. The moment you stop learning, that moment you are, you're there. They never finish as a student. Even they graduate from Berkeley, they continue to learn, they continue to be a student that continue to acquire knowledge and learning. Learning never stops. When you have that magical moment in which you can transmit the picture that you have in your mind into somebody else's mind, through ether, and, and, and all of a sudden that person gets exactly the same picture that you have in your mind, that's, that's a wonderful moment, that, that's a magical moment. I think it's the most exciting experience there is. What Seeing somebody else have that same realization is the same feeling of excitement for me as when I go through it myself. If I can pass on to them the experience that I had, then that's all I can ask for. I'm so happy. I make a difference in their life. And some of them become my friends. They are not my kids, but they are my younger brothers and sisters. And I, I, I saw a develop a deep connection with them. To students, you should know, though you probably can't really know unless you all become teachers, how important students are to teachers. I think it's almost impossible to understand when you're still a student, but when you become a teacher, through that transitivity, you can see it. You are like a boat in, a, in the sea, and, and the students, you know, they, they pick up on your wake, and, uh, and they are transformed by, by, your, by your pass through their lives. The students actually become our continuation. You, you see that they are going to continue the work that you have been doing. The legacy lives on. This is the group of people who are very talented. They are very motivated. And you are influencing them in some small and positive way. I think this is wonderful. This is wonderful.